is the gold coinage design coming along? I want to make a suggestion. It seems to me to be worthwhile to try for really good coinage, though I suppose there will be a revolt about it. I was looking up some old gold coins of Alexander the Great today, and I was struck by their high relief. Would it be well to have our coins in high relief and also to have the rims raised? <laughs> To learn more about the coin, we have to learn about the man that designed the coin, and that's Augustus St. Galden. He was born the son of a French shoemaker. His parents immigrated to the United States in 1850, where he grew up. At age 19, went to Paris and also Rome to study artistry, and he fell in love with Renaissance medals and bronze casting. In 1875, St. Galdens returned to New York City, where he began his modest career in artistry. He got his big first break in 1875 when he was commissioned to create a Civil War monument for General David Glasgow Fargut. This actually skyrocketed him in the art world. He became kind of a modern day superstar because of this. By the early 1900s, he was a towering figure in American fine arts. And because of all the monuments that he had done, Theodore Roosevelt knew about him, knew his artistry, thought it was absolutely amazing and wanted him to create design for our U.S. coinage. In 1905, Theodore Roosevelt commissioned Augustus St. Gaudin to create the new American coins. Now, these were American coins from one cent all the way up to the double eagle $20 piece. Theodore Roosevelt told the director of the Mint, George E. Roberts, not to let any politics interfere with the artistry St. Gaudin's was incorporating into the new coins. Well, work began on the new design for the double eagle in 19. St. Galdens wanted a high relief coin and so did Roosevelt. They wanted a high relief coin because they wanted to give the double eagle the nobleness, the majestic qualities that you see in Greek and Roman coins. Charles E. Barber resisted the St. Galdens high relief coin. It's not because he maybe got his feelings hurt because St. Galdens told Roosevelt that Barber was a mediocre artist at best and uh, shouldn't be creating any designs for the men. It couldn't be that. No, there's not any hurt feelings. There's not any strife going on between Barber and St. Galdens at all. Yeah, right. Of course, these guys didn't get along at all, period, because of uh, some of the things they've tossed back and forth to each other. But Barber's main excuse for resisting the high relief is he wanted a low relief because if you put a high relief, he thought that the coins wouldn't stack properly and therefore businesses wouldn't like them, banks wouldn't like them, people wouldn't like them, they wouldn't use them. So you've minted a whole bunch of coins that no one wants to use. Something else St. Galdens wanted too is he wanted Roman numerals on the 1907 coin. Well, Roosevelt also wanted this. So Roosevelt intervened to help St. Galdens get this accomplished on the 1907 coin. On February 1907, the dies were polished at the Philadelphia Mint and they were ready to go to strike some St. Galdens double eagles. Well, the first Platchet that entered the hydraulic press was struck seven times to bring up the high relief requirements for the coin. Well, this of course destroyed the die since only 18 to 22 of them were made before they were cracked. So progress was extremely slow on the coins from that point out. After this disaster, St. Gaudens realized that the U.S. Mint needed a coin that relief could be reached with one blow. Now, he came up with the high relief coin, but the main problem was St. Gaudens had cancer and it became worse, so little work was done on the coin. Then in August 3rd, 1907, St. Galdens passed away from the cancer. After St. Galdens' death, Charles E. Barber cut down the ultra-high relief design. Now, Charles Barber and St. Galdens had discussed just creating a high relief design, and so that's what Barber was trying to do. Well, this high relief design allowed for a circulated coin to be produced with only three strikes of the die, and there are two different variations of that. There's a wire rim and a flat rim. Charles Barber cut it down even further because they needed to produce more coins than what they were making. So he created a low relief design and he dropped the Roman numerals. He dropped the Roman numerals because a lot of the public was getting confused because they didn't understand Roman numerals so numbers worked a whole lot better. Now a lot of people out there think Barber butchered the St. Galdens design which you have to look at in two different ways. St. Galdens is an artist. 
Berber is a coiner. Even though they did have some conflicts uh, because of what was going on at the Mint, I don't think Barber really butchered the design. He was just a realistic coiner and made coins that could be produced fast for the public. The original St. Gaudens Double Eagles did not have In God We Trust on them. They were, quote, godless. Now, Roosevelt did not want In God We Trust on our currency. He thought it was sacrilegious to put God's name on money, which can be the root of all evil. The public went nuts. They were like, we can't have our money without God's name on it and God we trust. So Congress was forced to pass a law to allow In God We Trust to be put on our double eagle and our other currency. Now let's talk about the specs of the St. Gaudens double eagle. The coin is 90% gold, 10% copper, or 22 karat gold. It's 33.436 grams, and it was made in the Philadelphia Mint, the Denver Mint, and the San Francisco Mint. The coin was issued from 1907 until 1933. The obverse of the coin features a full figure of liberty with flowing robes, and she's holding a torch in her right hand and an olive branch in her left. Now, Liberty is a modification of the goddess Fame from the Sherman victory, which St. Gaudens had done a number of years back. Now, the word Liberty is located above her head on the top of the coin, and the date is on the side with the mint mark located just above the date. You also notice the Capitol building on the obverse in the background on the left side, and there are sun rays filling the fields behind Liberty. This is the rising sun of the Republic. Along the edges of the coin are stars representing the current states at the time the coin was produced. And underneath the date, you will see something that kind of looks like a compass. It kind of has this masonic uh, type look to it, but it's actually St. Gaudens' initials underneath the date. The reverse of the coin shows a soaring eagle in flight, flying through a rising sun, which its rays can be seen projecting out from the bottom of the coin. The words $20 in the United States of America are located at the top of the coin, and on on the very bottom near the sun, there are two different versions or varieties of this coin. There's the motto and the no motto. The motto has in God we trust, and that's from 1908 to 1933. And then there are the 1907 coins that have the no motto, and there are a couple of 1908 coins that do not have the motto either. One of the very unique things about St. Gaudens design of the double eagle is edge lettering. If you look on the edge, you'll see stars along with a pluribus unum. Let's talk about the collecting. The collecting is the fun part, right? Well, let's talk about the extremely rare types. These are the types of coins that you and I will probably never own, but if we get the opportunity to see them, we want to take a look at them. The first one is the Ultra High Relief. There were about 18 to 23, maybe a little bit more, of these coins made before the dies cracked because it took seven blows to bring it up to high relief. So this is a very rare, rare coin. But the cool thing is in 2009, the US Mint released the St. Gaudens True Ultra High Relief coin that's affordable for both you and I. This coin that you're seeing here was a uh, courtesy of Southern Coin and Collectibles. They have several of these that you can choose from. But this coin is what St. Gaudens envisioned. This is what he wanted his coin to look like. And it's possible in 2009 because of a lot of technological advances in the minting process. Another very rare coin that uh, is in the St. Gallen series that I've had the opportunity to see myself are the proof coins. Now the proof coins are described as being either sandblasted proof or satin proof. Now the sandblasted proof coins were made from 1908, 1911 through 1915. And that's when they stopped making the proofs on the St. Gaudens. Now the satin finished proof was made in 1909 and 1910. Now these are so rare today because nobody liked them. They didn't sell. Everyone thought they were atrocious, horrible looking coins because they didn't look like the traditional proof that everyone was used to. So that created a very rare type coin today that is very expensive and I've been fortunate myself to actually see some of them at a, an a and show. And the third extremely rare type St. Gaudens coin is the 1933 St. Gaudens. Now this coin was created for issue. There were about 450,000 of these coins made. 
But in 1933, another Roosevelt, Franklin Roosevelt, made it illegal to own gold bullion, period. So these coins were not released. They were kept at the mint and then eventually melted down and put into bars and then either spirited off to the Federal Reserve or to Fort Knox. Now, several of these escaped. And because they escaped, the U.S. government claims ownership on the coins. They claim ownership based that the coins were never released to the public. Well, there's only one legal 1933 St. Gaudens out there, and it was auctioned at Sotheby's and Stacks for $7.5 million. But that's not the end of the story. There are another 14 coins being held by the federal government. They were found, it was somewhere out west or the Midwest, and they were sent in for verification, and uh, they were kept. So. It's kind of interesting how that works out. But the funny thing is, if these 14 coins are still in litigation, it's either 14 or 12, I can't remember, 14 to 12, if these are still in litigation and they're released and they are sold at auction, the 1933 St. Gaudens will not be the rarest coin. The rarest coin will be the 1927 Denver Mint St. Gaudens because that coin has even less because most of those were all melted down by the federal government. So the 1933 at the moment is the top of the line in rarity of the St. Gaudens, but the 1927 Denver Mint might be coming along and push it out of the way, and the St. Gaudens uh, 1933 might be the second most rarest St. Gaudens coin. Now there are a lot of other rare St. Gaudens double eagle coins out there, and some of these are, might be within reach of you, but most of them probably aren't. And I'll just name the list here really quick. The 1922 San Francisco, the 1924 San Francisco, the 1924 Denver Mint, the 1925 Denver and San Francisco Mint, the 1926 San Francisco Mint, the 1927 Denver Mint, which had a low minage of 180,000 coins, and I don't think you're gonna see that one because that one's probably even rarer than the 1933. The 1927 San Francisco Mint, the 1929 Philly Mint, the 1930 San Francisco Mint, the 1931 P and Denver Mint, and the 1932 Philly Mint. Most of the coins in the late 20s and also the mid 20s were all melted down, but they had very high mintages. Now, if you were to look at some of the data, you would see 4 million, something like that, but uh, a lot of these were melted down. So if you melt them all down and you only have a few saved, you've got a very rare coin. The interesting thing about a lot of these coins, they were sent straight from the mint to the Federal Reserve, which here's something cool to kind of tell you about. If you would have gone to a bank back in, let's say, 1931 and say, hey, I want a bag of double eagles, they would have ordered them from the Federal Reserve, and you may have gotten a 1927D bag. Now, wouldn't that have been interesting? And you would have been paying dollar per dollar for them. That's just something to think about there. Collecting for the average collector, because if you're like me, you don't have a hundred grand to throw down on some of these super rare type coins. It's just a little bit too much. Even 50 grand or 20 grand is a little too much for me. And if you're just starting out, you want to go with something a little priced so that you can build your collection up. Well, let's talk about that as to what I would collect as a collector on a budget. Now, the first one I would look at is a 1908 Nomado whether it's a Denver or a Philadelphia. We have here a 61 and a 64, and we even have a AU raw coin. Something else you might want to look at too are the common dates, because the common dates are a very affordable way to start your collection. All the common dates you're seeing here are sent over courtesy from Atmex, that's American Precious Metals Exchange. They have some great coins over there, everything from slab to raw stuff. Their raw coins are graded very accurately, so you're not gonna be disappointed in purchasing a raw coin from Atmex. Or you won't be disappointed in purchasing a slab coin from Atmex. They're a great company, and I have bought from them dozens and dozens of times. Well, guys, we've talked a lot in this video about the St. Gaudens Double Eagle. We've talked about the history, we've talked about the politics, the stuff between Charles Barber, uh, George T. Morgan and St. Gaudens and Teddy Roosevelt and all that cool stuff. It would have been great to see everything unfold in history. And that's what I'm trying to do. Give you the history of coinage. And the St. Gaudens is considered by many to be the most beautiful coin ever made. So next time you're talking with your fellow collectors, you have some cool information to share with them. I'd like to take a moment too to thank our sponsors because without our sponsors, this show would not be possible because some of these coins I just don't have to show. 
I'd like to thank Atmex, Atmex.com, American Precious Metals Exchange, for sending over all the early turn of the century St. Gaudens that you've seen on the show. I'd also like to thank Numis Network, NumisNetwork.com. They've got a lot of modern coins over there on their website, so you can go check those guys out. I'd also like to thank Southern Coin and Collectibles for sending over the 2009 St. Gaudens coin that the Mint is currently producing. And you can go check those guys out too. And tell them, if you buy from them, tell them Mark Absalon sent you. Because like I said, without these guys, this show would not be possible. Well guys, keep checking your spare change because you never know what you might find, whether it's that wheat penny or maybe that 1913 V nickel. You never know, but keep checking your spare change. I'm Mark Absalon and I'm out of here.